Right, so the, the one I didn't mention on the slide, but ISO Guide 73. Now, this has risk management vocabulary. Quite an old document, 2009, but is hazard mentioned in here? Hazard, source of potential harm. Hazard can be a risk source. You can see how they're entwined. So, just very important to ensure that we understand the terminology. And I should imagine threat would be mentioned in here. Managing threats, it's only once. So important, it's important to understand, very important to understand what the risk sources say, what the security sources say, and what the health and safety sources say. Okay, moving on. So what can we note from that? A single accepted definition of hazard does not exist. We talked then about the risk management process in ISO 31000. I've added this slide. These are from a different um, slide deck, a different training course, but I just added them in here to look at the word context. It's all about the context. So we can use this risk management process in health and safety, in security, in environmental management. It's a framework, but ultimately we can do that because of the word there, context context we've got to work up the scope the context and the criteria very very important so we can lean on that framework um, in any discipline why is it important why is hazard identification important risk management is about decision as we know and we know that decisions cost lives hazard identification affects decisions decisions cost lives and livelihoods but also hazard identification is a major component of workplace risk assessment and a legal requirement in many countries and definitely in the UK. So here we can see the HSE document It's an example risk assessment. So if we dip into that, and I want to show this because some people might not have seen it, managing risks and risk assessment. So we can have a look at some templates here. Let's go to a motor vehicle repair shop. An example risk assessment. So how did the manager do this? He walked around looking for the hazards. He talked to workers thinking about the hazards, discussing the hazards. And then ultimately, as we can see here, then the hazard identification, he's identified hazardous substances. Very important as well, who may be harmed. He's identified car engines running inside. How are people going to be harmed? We've got fire, we've got battery charging, we've got electrical equipment, mechanical equipment. If you were doing a similar risk assessment using this template for a nightclub, then ultimately you're going to be thinking about people who are intoxicated. We're going to be thinking of physical injury. So just because it's a security risk assessment, it doesn't mean we can't use a risk assessment template like this as our basis. Hazard identification is similar. It's just ensuring that you are able to recognize the style of hazards that is there. Okay, so moving on. Hazard identification leads into risk assessment, which leads into determining the controls that we need and also then leads back into hazard identification. So as we can see, it's cyclical. It is actually iterative. It goes on and on and on because risk changes. This is a fantastic document. It's an old document, um, British Standard 18004, a guide to achieving effective occupational and health and safety form. Why I like this, because I love this overview of the risk assessment process. So identify the hazards. So identifying the hazards, you can see here it's iterative. Okay, I'll come to develop methodology in a moment. Hazard identification, that's what we've got to do. We do that so then we can assess the risks. We do that so then we can determine the control measures required for the hazards and the risks. So then we can implement our controls and of course we must then monitor and review. Monitor and review, really important, very often overlooked and it was also there in the ISO 31000 risk management process, wasn't it? It was also in there. Developing our methodology, very important, depending if you're a security company, if you're a health and safety company, if you're any type of company, depending on what you do, you're going to need to develop your methodology, one, for undertaking risk assessments, but within that, you're going to develop your methodology for hazard identification as well, because there's so many different types. 
Just now we've seen the 41 techniques for risk assessment in in risk assessment techniques in ISO 31 wrong in IEC 31010. Also, we looked at the strongly applicable uh, identified in there on how applicable they are to hazard identification. Very important. Managing change. Ha a change is a hazard. If you had a risk assessment and under the hazard you had change, well, of course, change is a hazard. It's ongoing. It's all the time. But certain changes are really big changes and you may need a formal management of change process. It is a little bit of a whole point because I just want to identify wrong, highlight hazard identification is an iterative process. It is ongoing. It's ongoing because risk changes. That's external. It's your context, the organization changes, which changes your risk. External context, internal context, all changing. So a little bit of a confirmation of knowledge from the first section. Terminology is very, very important, whether that's in safety, security or in risk, because we have different definition. A single definition we identify does not exist. Very important to take that away. And hazard identification is a major component of workplace risk assessment in some countries, especially the UK. That is a legal requirement. An iterative process like we've been identified because it is ongoing. Next, what we're going to look at, hazard identification.